In this video, I want to talk a little bit about DNA and RNA structure, specifically how to draw nucleic acids. The two nucleic acids that we've learned about are DNA and RNA. So we've talked previously about deoxyribonucleotides and ribonucleotides. So now we're going to use that knowledge and apply it as far as being able to draw nucleic acids. So let's just do this really, really simply. Think about how would we draw the DNA nu dinucleotide uh, 5 prime to 3 prime TC. So this means we would have two nucleotides connected to together, to specifically deoxynucleotides, because this is DNA, with the 5 prime end, uh, the 5 prime phosphate group is going to be on the thymine, and the 3 prime OH is going to be on the cytosine. So, how do these two actually connect? So I've drawn here, I've drawn a, a DTMP. So this is, of course, the uh, deoxyribose sugar. And I know that because the two prime uh, carbon has just a hydrogen here, and the five prime phosphate here is just just a phosphate. And over here we have the base uh, thymine. Now this is needs to be connected to a uh, cytosine nucleotide. Now this here is what we call a D uh, DNTP, specifically. Um, this is DCTP, so deoxynucleotide triphosphate, um, and it's deoxy because of the the two prime carbon has just the H's there. So, and specifically, this uh, this base here is cytosine. So now, what I want to do is I want to connect these two. Specifically, uh, I want to connect them here. This three prime OH of the 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 DTMP is going to nucleophilically attack this phosphate, the five prime phosphate of of the DCTP, and then when that happens, the electrons from here are going to go onto this O, and then this portion here, this pyrophosphate, will hop off, and then we will create a covalent bond between this O and uh, this P here and that will yield this molecule so this is the actual covalent bond that we've made and that bond specifically is a phosphodiester bond or phosphodiester linkage and what is a phosphodiester bond or a phosphodiester linkage well if, a, if an ester bond looks like this that is an ester functional group. What would a phosphodiester look like? Well, that would look like this. It would have a phosphate with the carbonyl there, and then an OR, and then an OR. So this is a phosphodiester, two ester linkages. And specifically, it's a three prime to five prime phosphodiester bond because the 3 prime OH of the previous nucleotide, deoxynucleotide in this case, is bound to the 5 prime phosphate of the next one. So um, recall that this pyrophosphate hopped off so um, we lose that pyrophosphate here and this gets hydrolyzed off into two inorganic phosphates so this reaction requires the equivalent of two ATP molecules. Now, in this case, these are deoxy uh, nucleotides that we're working with here. So, this is going to be a DNA strand, right? A DNA dinucleotide. This reaction would be catalyzed by DNA polymerase. And that's an enzyme you might have heard about in a previous biology course. Now, I wrote this OR here, and I don't want this to confuse people, but if these were ribonucleotides, then it would have been done by RNA polymerase. Okay, so I'm going to put a little asterisk here okay and that would only have been if these were ribonucleotides okay so now over here this is our little DNA strand now what if it was RNA instead there would be two main differences the first one is that of course these two prime groups would be OH's instead of just H's okay that's something we've talked about in the previous video in addition this is a T this is a T nucleotide, right? It has this little methyl group here. 
this uh, methyl, right, is the only difference between this and uracil. T's do not exist in RNA, so there would be no T's in RNA. Instead, they would just be U's. Okay, so if that was the case and we were making RNA, RNA polymerase would have catalyzed the reaction and this would have been an RNA strand instead. But this is the DNA strand. Okay, now I do want to mention one more thing. Notice I've drawn this little dotted gray line here. And the reason why I wanted to do that was to separate this yellow portion that I've drawn the, the sugars and the phosphate groups in from the nitrogenous bases. And the reason why is because when we think about DNA and its structure, which we'll talk about in more depth in the next video, is that it has this, the sugars and the phosphate kind of make up what's called the backbone. So I want to label that here. Anything to this side of the, the dotted line is going to be the backbone. Specifically, it's a sugar phosphate backbone. Sugar phosphate backbone. And then the interior, this portion here, of course, are the nitrogenous bases. We'll talk more about that in detail in another uh, video. So sometimes people will represent uh, single stranded DNA like this a line to represent. I've drawn it in yellow to indicate that that's the sugar phosphate backbone. And all these little uh, sort of pink lines represent the nitrogenous bases that are attached to the sugar phosphate backbone. So I hope that video was helpful as far as how to draw nucleic acids. Um, one last thing I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me at by email at moofuniversity at gmail.com for more information see the description box below thank you for watching